<laughs> At the risk of sounding like a motivational poster, don't cry because it's over. Be happy because we have late Nate Oates locked up for a while. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn, and thank you for making this your first listen every single day. I want to be sure to get that Final Four logo on my shirt in here. How about that? How about uh, that? It's official uh, now. It Very is official. official now. Um, i got to start buying my stuff. Is it che- Maybe it's cheaper a week after, is it? Uh, it should be, um, <laughs> especially if you get one that says Alabama National Champion on it. <laughs> uh, but look. Uh, let me let me say this: that um, Alabama loses to UConn. Congrats to UConn; they are a beast. I, I'm going to get that out of the way. I don't want anybody to think that th- this is locked on Bama, though. So we're going to talk about how this affects Alabama. If you're a UConn fan, tuning in to hear us cry, you're not going to hear sad. me. Cry. Uh, That's you're pretty be, sad too. I mean, why would you do that? Yeah, I mean, it's not like you're our rival. I tune in all the time to Auburn shows a lot to listen to them cry. That is like a hobby of mine. I just I just eat it up. But and I know Auburn fans do the same with Alabama show. I know that. I know they listen to our show all the time. It boggles my. I'm glad they do. Hey, you're well welcome in Auburn fans. I don't get why you're here, but I love that you are. Yes, but if you're a UConn fan, I'm going to tell you flat out, y'all are awesome. That that team's sick good. good team. I mean, look, I I want to say this that uh, though that. They had the least amount of fans there. I don't know if that means anything. I'm not trying to throw shade in UConn's face. I'm saying it was kind of weird. You, Purdue easily had the most fans at this event. I'm talking easily. Like, don't anybody try to tell me they didn't. They did by a long shot. Then I think it was probably NC State, but it may be us. It. I'm flipping. Kind of hard to tell because the colors are so similar, right? It is hard to tell because the colors, but also. Like at first, it felt like more NC State people, but their game was first. You know, like the Purdue thing was clear because of how many people were here all week that I was here. You know, the long weekend I was here, they and the Purdue unique people. colors. They're the only. Yeah. They're the only gold and black team, so yeah. it was easy to spot them, right? And also, um, again, not throwing shade, UConn fans were easy to spot because all of them just wear UConn jerseys. There, there was very nobody. It's very there was nobody northern. with like a collared UConn shirt or like a you know they had a, some maybe some retro tees occasionally, but most of them were UConn jerseys. It's very northern to me. I, I mean, don't you notice that like when, uh, when Ohio State and Michigan play college football, there's yeah. a lot of jerseys in the state. There's some jerseys at Alabama games too. Some, and I'm not knocking it. I just be, find it fascinating that it's part of the culture. Like in it the looks, South, we get. It dressed up for sports. Well, it's more of an event. Yeah, in, in, the, in the South. In the North, college sports are treated a lot like the pro sports. And the, in I the know South, this is, college sports are a reason for people to get dressed up. And this is a topic for another day, probably, because I know people want to talk about the game. But, man, jerseys of football or basketball or baseball nature look awesome on hot girls or hot women. Hot women, so. hot women. I should say women. I'm 52. I gotta say women. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say girls anymore. Uh, I but, always uh, say girls. That's funny. I, even when I was a divorce lawyer, I would say boys and girls. But, Boy um, stuff, girl stuff. But mm. uh, the, so anyway, having said all that, yeah, Alabama loses. They end up losing. They end up not covering. Frankly, I mean, they lose by 12, so they end up not covering the spread, which was 11 and a half. Vegas wins again. Gosh. Um, that's, that's misleading based on how the game played out. I hate to well, sound it was kind of about 56, right? It went 58 or 56. I would say with eight minutes left, that game could have gone to anybody. I mean, Definitely. eight minutes left, that was anybody's game. And then they thoroughly kicked our butts down the stretch. But I thought it wasn't they got hot at the did. They just emphatically showed who the better team was, you know, down the, the last eight minutes. But I thought 32 minutes, Alabama played toe-to-toe with who I think will be the two-time national champions. You know, when your coach is saying things like, yeah, we kind of don't have any holes anywhere, 
that that tells me your coach. I mean, as long as your coach isn't a moron and you're losing all the time, this coach isn't that way. Dan, Danny Hurley is a dude. Um, you know, I think Mark Sears certainly uh, did Mark Sears things. He's he he's just fantastic. Yeah, he got his shot stuffed a few times. That's going to happen when you play somebody that's seven two, and um, or you play a lot of dudes that are bigger than you. The, overall. Uh, as a friend of ours said in the text chain, his wife looked up at the game one time and said, all of their players are taller than all of our players. And that's probably true. And the other thing, and again, this is not – UConn nor Zach Eady get called for fouls. I'm, I'm just resigned to that. I think – they must call fouls differently in the Southeastern Conference. It feels like when we play – an SEC game, and this goes for both teams, no matter who we're playing just about all the time, or no matter who's playing, I should say, like both teams end up with, you know, in the double bonus every game and in both halves, right? Yeah. I, I, I guess UConn may have gotten there. I, I kind of quit paying attention when it got out of hand um, because I was at the game and like thinking about how to get out of this monstrosity of a parking lot. But um, the the it felt like they called some fouls on UConn late when it was totally irrelevant. Man, they play really, really physically. And if you allow them to do that, they are going to really beat you. Now, they're probably going to beat you anyway. But, and I, I noticed this from the Zach Eady that I've, I've been noticing this ever since I've started following the tournament a lot more. Zach Eady just stays in the paint. Nobody calls anything. And then he, he doesn't even apparently accidentally elbow somebody, even though his elbows come out to where everybody else's heads are. So, it's just weird that though I, I'm going to be really interested. I am not blaming this on the officials at all. I'm just saying I think it's going to be very interesting to see how the refs call this game between UConn and Purdue, which, by the way, is going to be a great game. And yeah, I think these are the it. best two teams in the country. I'm so looking I'm forward to it. Just the Klingon, cool with the Klingon 80 matchup itself is just is also great. I, I think what you're saying, uh, to, to me, it's like, you know what's emblematic of, of exactly what you're saying is the most famous Alabama play, the one that we'll be watching a long time from this game just because it's one of the cool highlights, is Grant Nelson posterizing Klingon. When when Grant Nelson dunked over Klingon, it was awesome. Yet, when they show that play, Klingon fouls Grant Nelson with his right arm, and then he fouls him with his left arm. No call. You're in Grant's face. There are two separate <clears throat> Connecticut fouls on that play, two separate ones, both uncalled. Okay, now wait a minute. I want to I say something about that too, because at the game, when it happens, when it happened, like all of us went nuts, right? But I was on the opposite end. We had moved seats by then. We were behind the backboard uh, for the Purdue game. And then my son and I moved over to where the NC State section was because a lot of them left, which happened to be on the opposite end. Right. So when that dunk happens and Grant ends up on the floor, right, because he gets hit in the face um, and everybody was like, wow, he, there's a great picture of Mark Sears doing like this. Yeah, right. There's a great, really great picture of um, uh, Muhammad Diabute, like almost about to clap as it's happening. Like he sees it's coming. He's like, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, but he gets hit. He goes on the floor and then Yukon quickly takes the ball out and throws it out. And the refs stop it. They stop their little fast break or whatever. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, he got the N1 because I couldn't see that he was a foul at the time. Well, they put the replay up immediately, and you clearly see it's a foul. And I'm like, okay, we're about to shoot free throws. This all happened in a pretty quick sequence. And no, then just UConn just got the ball back. Yeah. I'm like, well, why did you stop play? If I'm UConn, I'm like, if it wasn't a foul, let us go because we have a huge – numbers advantage right now like all the Alabama all right. players are like oh my god what a play Grant Nelson's on the floor his face is caved in so he's probably not going to make it back in time for defense so we have a fast break I, I mean why did they stop the play Jimmy did they and, and I, I, I don't know if it's because they thought Grant was hurt I don't know what I do know is on literally the next possession of the game they call uh Klingon for a foul on the other end of the floor that was absolutely not a foul. And Danny Hurley nearly got teed up on it. And I don't blame him because that was just as bad of a call as the failure to call the foul on the Nelson dunk. It was, I thought, the most obvious makeup call ever. I'm sure they showed the replay of that dunk multiple times in, in the dome and the refs might have seen it and gone, oh, oh, boy, how did we not see that while 
the whole world was watching it. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, it's just a good example of, of what you're saying about the officiating as usual in a college basketball game is super crappy. It's not the reason Alabama lost. There were bad calls on both sides. Uh, but boy, that, that it's just funny to me based on what you said, like, yeah, even the best play Alabama made all night that we'll be talking about forever included uncalled Connecticut fouls that were pretty violent because it did not grant to the floor hard. And look, it's but even if the ref wanted to do a makeup call, and I do believe they exist, even though refs were always deny them. Um, I, it's not a makeup call because see, if you called the foul like it should have been on that, and again, cost I'm Alabama. Asking, point. I'm not asking you to do something you know, kind of nitpicky. I'm saying the man got hit in the face on a dunk that was clear and he got knocked to his butt. Clearly it was a foul. Most everybody saw it from where we were sitting. I just can't see that far. And you stopped play to check on the man's uh, probably broken jawbone. So why didn't you just call it? And again, it's not a, a, a makeup call because a foul in that moment is different than a foul over here. And I don't want you making that like foul I said, over here. The, the, the bad miscalled Alabama cost Alabama point when the quote makeup call happened and they called clinging for something on the other end of the floor that wasn't even a foul. Alabama just simply got the ball back. That's not a makeup call because we, we were deficient in points <laughs> due to <laughs> due to the call. So that, that that's uh like you said, there's no makeup call that makes up for anything and to me makeup calls are the worst that's an official going gosh i made a bad call let me make another one <laughs> so things will end up. just call the game right yeah i mean and again it's one thing sometimes there are calls that are tough to make and i always think refs get the short end of the stick i really do sometimes there are calls that are tough to make and you know you just miss one that was easy and it like if you can't make that why are you in the final four. So, Jimmy, I got to go to break, though. And when we come back, we're going to get into more of this game. But, of course, I'm going to tell you about LinkedIn. You know how much we love LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is just a huge part of the Alabama locked on Bama locked on family. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to make to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn is a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Look, all you got to do is go post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions. Yep. So, um, speaking of Grant Nelson, he said something really interesting after the game. He said, um, you know, hey, this is something to – essentially, I'm not going verbatim. I just got up, y'all, uh, that, uh, you know, this is something to build on for next year. We have, And people have, have certainly run with that, and they should, I guess. Um, I don't necessarily know that it means Grant will 100% be back, but I think that there's a strong possibility. I feel better about it. I would love for Latrell Reitzel, who I thought played very admirably coming off his injuries. Um, this is a guy that if he comes back, boy, he is a deadly shooter. Rylan Griffin actually made a, a allusions to that, like, yeah, we I've been to the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four. Now I want to go further. Now he didn't say I want to go further at Alabama, but I think that is easy to um, infer from that. And um, so, yeah, I feel like there's a, a lot to look forward to. I, I mean, again, I know I said it kind of, oddly at the front, but uh, I, I'm not sad because it's over. I'm really happy that all this happened and the game was, was fun. And, and, you know, when we started, when we were blistering hot from three at the beginning and we weren't turning the ball over and we were, yeah, we had a free throw discrepancy. We did, um, which was bothersome, but it happens. Um, and we were rebounding and I was, and I was like, we're kicking butt. And you look up and we're still down four. I'm like, this is going to be a tough road to hoe. <laughs> tough road to hoe. Um, yeah, if you had to hoe your roads, that would really be tough. But um, so, the old yeah. days. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's just uh, we we gave it. We played very very well, um, and it just wasn't enough because they're better than us. And I have no problem saying that. 
You know, when you started out uh, that uh, spiel, uh, you're talking about potentially players coming back. One thing I point out about people that that saw the Ryan Griffin quote or the Grant Nelson quote and want to make too much of it, y'all might remember uh, those that listen to our show all the time that Luke and I both reported uh, or or talked about last January, early in January, that from from different multiple sources, really good ones too, we felt that Terry. Brown Arnold, despite being mocked in the first round, was was going to come back to Alabama or, or was leaning towards coming back. And then that didn't happen. Uh, Terry went, went pro and neither Luke and I, were, we weren't surprised. We weren't like, oh, gosh, sorry, we told you all. Uh, no, we, 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 we said everything we said with caveats at the time. But the point being that when we said that Terry was coming back, that was from excellent sources close to Terry we we were correct in saying what we said at that time. At the time Luke and I said it, it was right. Terion just changed his mind. And he changed his mind because he was presented with information that changed his mind. In other words, him and his people sat down with NFL people. They sat down with Nick Saban. They talked to, 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 to agents and they got the information they needed to where it's like, you know what? Gosh, I, I want to stay. But I can't walk away from generational money that will change my family forever. So he changed his mind based on information that, that he got later. So that's why, I, same exact reason, I would urge anyone that saw the Grant Nelson quotes, the Ron Griffin quotes to like, don't assume anything right now. Uh, I'm sure that if you ask those players and the emotion after losing the game with their teammates last night and all hugging and crying together in the locker room, that everyone wanted to return. But what's going to happen is they're going to talk to their agents and they're going to talk to their families and they're going to get further away from the emotion. And they're going to go to things like the NBA draft process and the NBA combine and hear from quote, the general manager of the Cavaliers, what we think about you and and such and such, or they'll hear from their agent. Hey, you know, if you got the portal, you're looking at about $900,000, you know, uh, things will change and no one needs to make too many assumptions about what the roster is going to look like next year. Because one year ago from right now, Luke, what were we saying? Betty Ako, he'll be back. Yeah. JQ, JQ, no chance he's coming back. <laughs> then he did, but then he didn't. Yeah. I mean, that's why you can't, no one knows. No one knows. Nate, if Nate Oates doesn't know, how the heck do you know? And I'm talking to you people. Well, and Nate Oates also said, Hey, Grant, we expect Grant back or something like that. And he said, but you know, he, he really showed out in this tournament at spots and uh, we'll see what kind of effect that has. Again, that's not verbatim, but that's essentially what he said. Um, Mark Sears, look, um, our buddy over at uh, Yay Alabama has said, yeah, we're going to do everything we can to get Mark Sears back. And there may be a chance Mark Sears come back. In fact, I, th- I don't, I, it's not just a chance. I think, there's probably better than 50 50 both he and grant come back is my guess but what that means is there's probably a 49 percent chance both of them are gone and and it it's okay because i'm going to tell y'all something we're not going anywhere we're good i the people that i spoke to um just around me they were like kind of shocked that we were even there like y'all know that there are orange round bouncy balls that you put in the nets and um we're like, we knew y'all were good in football. And it was funny. I had a rather spirited debate with a, Mich- a Michigan State fan next to me. They were fans from everywhere here, by the way. And this um, this young lady, well, not young lady. I mean, she was probably a little younger than I. So, yeah, young lady. She's next to me and uh, with her friend. And she was pulling for NC State just because at the time. And then she was pulling for Alabama. And she started talking. She goes, well, I'm a Mich- Michigan State fan. So, you know, all I'm worried about is basketball and I said, yeah. She goes, but, you know, everything's just getting so crazy. And I said, yeah, and it's all driven by football. She goes, we're not with us. You know, we're big basketball. I said, let me tell you something, sister. God bless you. I love you. But I said, she goes, what do y'all feel about football? I said, most of our fans would throw basketball in the river if it meant hurting football at all. And I said, that's, but that's true of a lot of places. She goes, yeah, like Ohio State and Michigan. I said, yeah. And if Michigan State's athletic department is smart, they feel the same way because this whole thing is driven by football. She goes, not us. And I said, yes, you too. I said, if you take football away, your basketball will be Michigan much State less. probably makes more money in football than basketball. I mean, Michigan I guess State? They're, they're, yeah, Michigan State 100%. probably makes more, more, more money in football than basketball. A hundred percent. I'm sure they, I'm sure they do. 
Not, not, not just a little more. I'd be willing to bet a lot more. And I said, because let me tell you something. The only thing any of these fans in here, these general casuals think about when it comes to basketball is this tournament. I said, nobody's watching Michigan State Purdue when it's a huge game and we love it. In January, and it draws a 1.2, you know, mm -hmm. or less. It doesn't even draw that really probably. I said, but when Michigan State plays Purdue in football, NBC Sports and, you know, whoever else has ESP, I mean, has the Big Ten mm -hmm. now, they're clawing each other's eyes out to try and get it for that 11 o'clock spot because they know that's what's selling people want to watch football. So, anyway, she she kept saying, well, you're just wrong. I said, okay. I said, you just do it your way. I said, but how many mm – -hmm. UConn is getting away with just basketball because their football isn't good yet, and I doubt it will be good. But they are – a very big exception to the rule. And if we have so much, if we have a lot more reorganization, they're going to feel the pinch too. So we'll see. But anyway, um, also really quickly, Jimmy, before we go to our next break, I do want to give a shout out. First of all, to Michael Southern at Tide Hoops History. Um, I got to meet him. I got to uh, hug his neck. He was like so thrilled to be there. It, it warmed my heart that he was, he was there like he was choked up just seeing Alabama take the floor because he has given a lot of his life to Alabama basketball. And he's dedicated. Go follow him to, at Tide Hoops History. He he knows his stuff, and um, he he was there. He was boots on the ground. It was so cool for him to be there. And then um, Keenan and Daniel. I mean, I'm walking into the bathroom, and like these two guys are like, "Oh God, you're Luke," and I was like, "Yeah." And so I sit and talk to him for a while. And I mean, I mean, we just talked for a long time. And they eventually said, "You're just like you are on the podcast." I was like, "I couldn't make that up." I was like, oh, "Jimmy and I." This is exactly who we did. Are. They mean you were talking to them outside the bathroom and no noise was coming out of your mouth. <laughs> that would, yeah, that, that that would, would have been great. funnier. That would be great. You need to do that. That would be this. funnier if I had gone into a stall and, and they were still outside talking to me. And I'd never <laughs> like, just like you were on the body. Um, but that, no, they were super cool. And then, uh, um, Let's see. I know I met a couple. There were a couple other folks I met out there. That, that was just great. And uh, I, I'm just waking up, so it's taking me a minute uh, to get all this stuff uh, nailed You're down. Staying for Purdue, UConn, or are you headed oh, back no. to Alabama? Kevin, Kevin Thomas was another one I did want to bring up. He like walked over to my section to meet me very via DMs. He slid into my DMs, and I slid back. I don't know. Was that what you do? Um. You re anyway, re slid. I re slid. So um. No, I'm not. I have tickets, and I won't give them to my son to let him take his take a friend. Oh, but nice. I told my son that if Alabama wins and we're playing, not only is your friend out of luck, so are you because I'm going to need the extra space to, to be, you know, put your excitement chaotic. to put your excitement. Yeah, I'm yeah. taking up one seat. The excitement will take up the other. <laughs> I'm taking my I'm taking my good friend, not you. Uh, <laughs> have you met my friend, not you? Um, okay, all right, here we go. Uh-oh, I did that wrong. It's been so long since we didn't have a live read that, like, I'd forgotten yeah. that you do this other one. Anyway, uh, Jimmy, so right at the end, I, I just want to say, man, thank you to this basketball team. I know they don't watch it, and I don't want to be like a goofy, you know, boy, I'll go, I guess I'll go ahead and say it, like a goofy Auburn fan. They always seem to write, like, Auburn, there's especially an Auburn fan. I can't remember what his name is on Twitter. After um, after the basketball team lost to Yale, he 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 wrote a letter on Twitter like, "Dear Auburn basketball," and and like I was like, you know, they're not reading this, right? <laughs> and it was like it was like ten paragraphs. Do you think like Auburn basketball people were like, "Hey, let's get this to the team immediately," you know, some Nimrod with a nickname <laughs> that begins with at is telling us how awesome we are. Um, but no, uh, I, I just want to say, man, I I thoroughly enjoyed this season so much. Oh, I really did. I mean, it, it it's um, look, it's going to have its highs and lows, and it always will. But we are so fortunate to have this coach. I <laughs> it made me a little mad. I had a couple of friends text me during the game, like, "Boy, we really need a big man. Boy, we really need to." I'm like, "We're in the freaking Final Four. Don't tell us what we need to do anymore. Yeah, We're no, there. Yeah. yeah, quit telling us what we need." We're, we're good. You know? Yeah, and NATO's system. I mean, for, for instance, I don't, I, Donovan Klingon's not going to play in NATO's system. First of all, he'd never sign with Alabama, and I don't think we'd recruit him because he doesn't fit in what we want to do. And for those who get frustrated by that, 
Okay, then we'll ditch everything that we're doing and do something else that never got us to the final four, by the way. This is the system that delivered the final four, not any other system. Uh, the, 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 the smart coaches create a system and then recruit to it. So Alabama is not going to have a seven foot two, 290 pound guy who cannot run the floor uh, out there. I, I just don't think that, that that's something that Nate wants to do. Uh, but, but we do need an answer. And, and I think that's something they're going to work on. And there is a big guy that's coming in in this class who happens to be a McDonald's all American. So uh, I think we do have a, a rim protector type that that's on the way. And, uh, and he's a kid that can run the floor and do all the things that Nate wants him to be able to do. So uh, I'm super excited. Uh, Nate's one of the best coaches in all of college basketball and Alabama will be back. Uh, I just hope that our fans don't expect the final four every single season because we're not going to do that. No one has ever done that. Not, not, not anyone since UCLA 50 years ago uh, has done that in terms of, oh, let's just make the final four every single season. Uh, it's a goal. It's so cool that under with this staff now, I think making the final four is a reasonable goal. But, uh, man, we're going to be good every year. We'll be good and very competitive every single season with Nate Oates as our coach. All right, very quickly on some of the football stuff, Jimmy. Yeah. We, we'll talk more about uh, the scrimmage notes as, as all these leak out. Um, but a couple of things I know, Jade Roberts went down with an injury that that scared a lot of people. Apparently, Kalen DeBoer said he's going to be fine, but maybe out a little bit. Now, I don't know what a little bit means. Yeah, I'll be surprised uh, if Jaden Roberts is, is, is playing on A-Day. And, and while th that's no big deal, that doesn't matter. What matters is, is Jaden Roberts, who's one of the very best players on the team, he's one of the very best offensive guards in the country now, uh, is Roberts going to be back for Western Kentucky? It appears that uh, his injury uh, in the scrimmage is going to have no effect on fall, fall camp or Western Kentucky. I just don't suspect he'll be out there for a day, which is going to make, man, I'm telling you guys, the offensive lines are just makeshift for, for a day. The first team offensive line is now Elijah Pritchett and Wilcom Formby at tackle. Tyler Booker and Rock Montgomery at guard and James Brockermeyer at center. Um, and in my opinion, I think only one of those players will be playing that position <laughs> in the fall when the game start. Mm. I mean, so That's very scary. makeshift offensive line, first and second team. Because when you when you lose them on the see with A Day, if you lose them on the first team, you got to bump up a two up to the ones. Now you're bumping up a three to play with the twos. Yeah. That's scary. What about uh, Parker Brailsford then? Yeah, Kalen DeBoer spoke about Parker Brailsford in his press conference. Parker, uh, you know, uh, reportedly was not at the scrimmage and hasn't reportedly been at the last few practices. But Kalen DeBoer said uh, Parker is not transferring, that he is working through some things. I think that's the quote. Uh, he is working through some things. He is still working out with Alabama Strength and Conditioning Program and is still in the Alabama football program, and he is not leaving per Kalen DeBoer, but he has been away uh, from, from the team to work some things out. So uh, I would just think that we need to consider it as fans, a personal issue uh, that's none of our business. And, uh, and, and, and hopefully uh, things will, will be normalized uh, very soon. And he, Kalen DeBoer acted as if, now he didn't say this, but he acted as if he said Parker Burles will be back practicing sooner rather than later. Maybe that means this week. And that even plays next Saturday, a day. I mean, I don't think we can rule that out. So uh, whatever's going on with Parker, uh, he's still a part of the team. And in my opinion, it's going to be very difficult for James Brockermeyer to beat out this fall based on how Brailsford played in the games. But boy, uh, some good news for Alabama at center after having a season full of some bad news at center. Uh, it looks like Alabama's got a good two man competition that could extend into fall camp and, uh, Hey, football with in this day and age when you can play 16 or 17 games, having two centers sounds like a dang good idea. I really want Kalen DeBoer seems like kind of a funny, engaging, I mean, not like super ha ha funny, but occasionally ha ha funny, uh, engaging coach, you know, a little bit different than Nick Saban in a way with the media. But I really wish, you know, because I think what we're all gleaning from this Parker Brailsford stuff is this could be something to do with mental health potentially and which again there's nothing wrong with that and in that way I don't think we do have a right to know I mean I wish there'll be some reporter some smart ass reporter I'm sure that'll go you know hey coach what's going on with Brailsford well I wish coach would do something like well he has been seeing uh he's been going to this facility 
uh, over over by you know over by the river. He goes, really? Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's near the dam by the river. He said, there's a there's a business. And we have a dam. It's like, yeah, it's the Nunya Dam business. <laughs> it's the Nunya River, and it's Nunya Dam business. That, that was a long wow, way to get there. That was a long way to get there. For, for that. <laughs> so he's got to work on it. He's got to work on it. I'm just, I'm giving him the, I'm giving him the pieces. Well, I mean, us fans, I mean, we're as guilty of, we're as guilty of it as anybody else. We want to know everything, and and we're, we're not guilty of that. And I'm guilty of that. And you're guilty of that. And everyone listening is guilty of that. And sometimes. We don't need to know. It's it. It literally isn't our business. It's not fair uh, when it's not when you know if it's football related. You know, hey, he got upset because he got beat out at practice. Okay, that's kind of football related. But but all indications are, and we've said at BOL. Uh, you know, uh, Tim Watts has said at BOL. You know, uh, you know, the, 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 we're just the, this is just not you know not all things are football related, and yeah, if it's not right. football related, then we don't have a right to know. And look, I, hey, here's the other thing. Why don't you treat this? And again, I, I don't want everybody to claim mental health every time a girlfriend breaks up with them, right? I'm not, I'm not advocating for that. But I'm saying, and again, I'm, I'm taking this a little bit too far, probably because we don't know that's what this is. Yeah. But if it is, and it sounds like it may be, then why don't we treat it as if Parker Brailsford has a high ankle sprain of his psyche? You know what I mean? And, yeah. and like, let him get a little better. I, I want him to be as healthy mentally as I do physically. If he's going to be out there playing football in the SEC, which requires a strong mind and a strong body. So let him heal a little bit. Again, I'm not saying everybody needs to take a week off every time they get a B instead of an A or every time a girlfriend doesn't, you know, uh, want to go out with him or whatever. I'm saying let's let's just. Let him uh, let him get adjusted to life in Tuscaloosa. I promise you, life in Tuscaloosa is is different. I don't know about harder. It's different than being in Washington. Oh yeah, man! What a cultural adjustment. Just a cultural adjustment, and just like it would be for any of us listening, off all of a sudden, uh, though you had never considered it in your life, three weeks from now you're living in Seattle. Yeah, I mean, you'd be like, what, what, what happened? <laughs> Why am I here? I would so need. I promise you, I would need mental health <laughs> associates, experts, if I moved to Seattle. You there can you get go. on that. There you go. Uh, there's not enough Nirvana Coffee. songs over there to make me feel better. Well, that would be the cool part, though. That would, yeah. If Nirvana songs make you feel better, you do have a problem. <laughs> by the way. No, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, in, I'm into the grunge scene, man. Or now, just now? Uh, I'm just finding out about it. It's been over for 30 years. <laughs> I'm just finding out about it, and I'm on my way to buy some flannel. You just found out about it. I'm, just, I'm, 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 headed to, I'm headed to the flannel store now and to yeah. get my Pearl Jam 10 album. Be sure to get a be sure to buy a white suit with big shoulders while you're there. <laughs> so you can go out on the town. Um, all right, that's going to do it for today's podcast. Hey, we're out of the Final Four, but they're into our hearts. And until next time, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.